So it seems like everyone's using ChatGPT as much as they can today, but I see some obvious mistakes that people keep making. I wanna show you guys what to stop doing and what you need to do instead. The first is not training it in your writing style and just using the default ChatGPT writing style. The thing is, the default writing style of ChatGPT is just so easy to sniff out. I see it instantly in emails, even Instagram captions, and it's kind of embarrassing to get caught. We all know that we're using ChatGPT ChatGPT, but you don't want to be so obvious about it because it makes it look like you didn't care enough to do it yourself. When sending an important email, that's not a good look. And even with an Instagram caption, it just looks a bit careless. Most people know to delete the M dashes because they really are a dead giveaway that you used ChatGPT. But it's more than just that. There's just a tone and a style of typing that anyone that uses ChatGPT a lot will pick up on subconsciously. Here's an Instagram caption where I could tell the write up was so scenic, M dash. Beach views, time to just relax, read a book, talk, and take it all in. It felt like that kind of day that reminds you to slow down and be present. It, this is just so classic chat GPT to me. This was another one. Sweet views, pitch side pours, and a few questionable referee calls, dot, dot, dot. Perfect night if you ask me. It loves to give three examples and then kind of tie it together. It's, it's not a bad caption. It's just very obvious that chat GPT was used. But the good news is you can train it to sound just like you. And it's actually quite easy. All you need to do is screenshot examples of emails or Instagram captions that you have actually written that are really in your own voice. So let's say I'm using it to brainstorm an Instagram caption. We're gonna upload these first to ChatGPT and then have it come up with captions based on that. So we're gonna take this photo and have it write some Instagram captions. First, I wanna show you guys the generic ones that it comes up with for this. They just, I mean, I feel like these are just so ChatGPT to me if I saw someone post these i'd be like oh you totally used it especially the one <laughs> number three serve rally repeat dash such a fun day on court like okay it's just so generic but as you can see when you screenshot some captions that you've written yourself and you upload these you're gonna get a better result these feel more like me some of them still are kind of generic like number one i think is still pretty generic sounding but number two it's simple and that does sound like something that i would post i would just go back and forth so i told it to not use any m dashes or give examples in threes and again it comes up with some decent ones like i liked a couple of these actually and to me they sound more like me and i don't think Think people would know that it's ChatGPT. Honestly, I still don't really use ChatGPT for Instagram captions unless I'm really stuck, maybe for some help, but I see a lot of people doing it and this is how you can make it just less obvious. Okay, before we get into the next one, I wanna thank Factor for sponsoring this video. If you guys are into being efficient and eating healthy like me, then you're gonna love Factor. They have these meals that are super easy to make and they have everything, breakfast, lunch, dinner. They even have smoothies and pressed juices. Most of them you can pop into the microwave for a couple minutes and you're good to go. Or you could put it in the oven if you want to. They're chef crafted and dietitian approved. They have over 80 different meals each week. So you can find a number of different meals depending on what kind of diet that you follow and they're fresh so this was never frozen crazy to just have a filet mignon like this quick and easy i feel like this is a really good breakfast option the kale and mushroom egg bites you get 13 grams of protein in these and they're ready in two minutes that way you're not going to succumb to some kind of cheat meal because you have a go-to easy convenient healthy option at home they currently have two times as many seafood options with premium seafoods like salmon and shrimp i've been really liking the high protein ones like the beef fillets you can get chicken like i just had that filet mignon that was so good if you're wanting to stick to a routine and stick to eating healthy but have a hard time doing that because you know when life gets in the way it's easy to just go get some fast food but when you have like a go-to option that's delicious and healthy you're way more likely to stick to it if you guys want to try it they gave me a special offer for you guys head to factor75.com or click the link below and put in the code shelbyfb50 that's gonna get you 50% off your order plus free breakfast for a year. That's Shelby code FB50 at factor75.com for 50% off plus free breakfast for a year. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring. Now let's get back into the video. The next mistake is only using ChatGPT for writing tasks when it's actually gotten really good for visual and graphic design work. This is probably my favorite use for ChatGPT actually is creating interior design renderings. If you need to renovate a space or even just like redecorate it, you can visualize the whole thing, upload the products that you're going to use, and it can create a really great rendering, better than anything I could Photoshop myself. Here are some examples that I've created. I even used it to storyboard this shot for a brand who 
wanted to see what the shoot was going to look like and it actually made it a lot easier going into shooting as well. It's really cool. The one thing I will say is ChatGPT5 did kind of mess us up because I've been trying to get it to work with my new kitchen area, seeing what an island would look like. So I was gonna show an example for this video and I went to take photos. And this is what it's giving me. So I'm sure they'll fix this and we'll be able to use it properly again soon. But just know that if you're using ChatGPT5, you might run into an issue because what the heck is that? <laughs> this was with ChatGPT4 and this is with ChatGPT5. So it turns out what they say about threatening it is true. I told it it did a horrible job and to do it like ChatGPT4 and it actually did a more accurate version. So try that out in the meantime until they kind of fix this because I was able to eventually get it to work, but it's also great for video title cards or other kinds of graphics. All of these I use ChatGPT to create. The key of course is how you prompt it because if you just say make a title card, it'll look really bland, not very cool. But if you go on Pinterest or Dribble and you find some cool examples to get some inspiration from. I would recommend drawing inspiration from a couple different sources and letting it mix those together. But here are some more examples. You can see, yeah, sometimes it'll mess up the words, but if you just redo it a couple times, it'll eventually get it right. Even the Griffith Park video that I made, I used it to make a couple of the graphics for that. If you're just using it for writing, you're missing out because it's actually getting pretty decent at graphic design. Not better than an actual human in most cases, and but you got to admit, they do look pretty good and I'm sure they're just gonna keep getting better. Unless we're stuck with ChatGPT5, then we're screwed. The next mistake is trying to completely outsource your brain or the entire creative process to ChatGPT. The best way I found to use it is to write everything myself, still use my brain, upload it to ChatGPT or Claude and have it find things that I didn't think of. Really kind of have it enhance your work. The mistake here is just outsourcing your entire brain to ChatGPT. It's gonna make your work really generic. I feel like you'll end up saying a lot of things without really saying anything. What you wanna do instead is collaborate with it. So this is something I've been doing with thumbnails for videos lately. I'll give it my best shot on my own of what I want the thumbnail to look like and then I'll upload a couple options to ChatGPT and see what it thinks. It often does have some good suggestions that make it look better. But just notice, I'm not just asking it to make the thumbnail from scratch, I'm more so collaborating with it. And often when I see the ideas that it kinda has come up with, it will cause me to think of even better new ideas. So I'm not outsourcing my entire scripting process and my entire brain to ChatGPT, but I would say it's more of a collaboration. And if you really wanna get the best results, I feel like that's what you should do. You still kinda need to curate it and cut things out that just seem like fluff. But yeah, just overall, I think it is really helpful for brainstorming and writing, but it's gonna be even better if you still use your brain too. Each on their own, like me or ChatGPT is fine, but together collaborating, it really is actually a lot better. And the last mistake I know a lot of people are making, and I myself do sometimes as well, is not asking it how to improve your prompts. A lot of people when they're new to using ChatGPT, just prompt it in a very generic way. Come up with a video idea. Come up with a video idea that's gonna do really well. It's usually gonna tell you to be more specific, but it will give you examples on what you need to be specific about. For example, with the prompt of help me come up with a video idea, the feedback from it was help me come up with a seven minute video idea where I hook the viewer in two minutes and the title is six 60 characters or less. Much more specific, you're gonna get a much better answer from it. If you're not happy with the answers it's giving you, then ask it for feedback on your prompt. If you've never asked it this before, actually just ask it simply, how am I using ChatGPT wrong? How could I be using ChatGPT more effectively? What features have I not used yet? Because it knows your history of how you've used it better than I do, and I'm sure you use it slightly differently than I do, so it's gonna give you a better answer than I would. So those are just a few of the mistakes I see people making when they're using ChatGPT or honestly underutilizing it. Like so many people don't know about the 3D renderings and that is my favorite thing about it. If you're gonna take away anything from this video, please just train it in your writing style if you're gonna use it for Instagram captions. I cringe every day because I see people doing this and I'm like, really? You couldn't just write the Instagram caption yourself? You know, looking back, I think everyone just goes through a phase where they use it. Like I used it for some Instagram captions also. 
Then I noticed that it was extremely obvious because I saw other people doing it, so I stopped. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any features that you found or things that you think I'm doing wrong with ChatGPT, comment them down below. I was hoping that GPT-5 would have some more exciting updates. I haven't found anything personally that useful yet, but I'm gonna keep playing around with it and I'll update you guys if I find anything really cool. That is gonna be it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more tech, AI, real estate. I mean, I make videos about pretty much everything, but I do some AI related ones here and there, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.